This is gonna be totally awesome. Part four, a new hope. And on that note, a toast to our friends in Persia, Iran, who have a new hope to make for a modicum of excitement in our little lives. And now, from the foothills of the Appalachians, in the kingdom of the lung cancer cough, as a great documentarist once put it, another Grand Shy Squad unboxing from Tom's Guitar Emporium in uh, Lewisburg, West Virginia. Hey, we're practically neighbors. Hi, Tom. Thank you for the speedy delivery. Now, can we get it open without too much consternation? Let's find out. Showing. Uh, the wild strings going witchy way. Posing a danger to the naked eye. Make sure not to poke myself and get blinded on camera. That would be neat. And there we go. 1983 PV227, a Scott Drove recommendation. And before we get much further, I'm going to curl these babies up. As in German, we say in German, ich sehe das Schwarz. I see an eye puncture, a retinal dislocation, a corneal infraction in my future. But this way I can at least make it less likely that I'll poke my eye out. So, what does it say? U.S. patent numbers for the... Uh, and other patent application pending. Have a look at this. I haven't seen a patent um, on any guitar in my collection of only, I don't know, 30? What do you think? Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, I know the lighting should play. Hey. Is it made in America? I think it actually might be. This. Oh. Got some little rattle, crispy critters rattling inside. But, hey. Look. Fixed bridge. What do you think? I much prefer this kind of stuff. Fixed bridge, round saddles. Where do the strings load in? Hmm. It's not a string through body. Hmm, this will be interesting. Do you have to raise the bridge? Hmm. I see what they mean about pads. I've never seen a bridge like this where it's not obvious where the strings load in, but hey, we'll figure this stuff out. So, a Scott Grove recommendation. Still my favorite guitar, YouTube guitar guy. Dave's world of fun stuff is real good too, but Scott Grove is a man who made me want to accumulate every guitar in the whole damn world, so let's plug her in. Woohoo! I am establishing my arsenal for my outpost in Kentucky. I got my original Charvel bass and a Firefly baritone that kind of sucks and a King... Base six that kind of okay, but that was some cheap stuff for 200 bucks. 
This one's 650 off Reverb from Tom's Guitar Emporium in West Virginia. And I am going to use that to complete my arsenal of recording stuff for my little amateur recording project in my outpost in Kentucky. Now, <coughs> more beer. Now my baby amplifier so you can laugh at me. Now, my strap so I can strap it on and be like helmet or something. The Black Star Fly, I don't know, it's compact. Yes, yes, you can make fun of me for dem demonstrating stuff on gear that's probably not the best to demonstrate on. But here we go. And nothing comes out. What is going on here? Hmm. Is the cord plugged all the way in? No. Now it is. So this is neck pickup only. This is the reason Scott Grove recommended it. It's a uh, three pickup guitar and Scott Grove's into that and so am I. The middle pickup that nobody uh, ever uses, well here, rails, another Scott Grove recommendation because individual pull pieces create a magnetic stopping point for blah, the strings, oscillations, and supposedly having rails will give you better sustain, man. So, pretty much in tune, pretty close. Thank you, Tom's Gear Emporium, for doing up uh, the G strings out, but that's understandable. Yes, I know, Scott Grove, you would say that I'm tuning my guitar wrong, but hey, I know that the only harmonic points that are bang on are this and this, and technically this, the uh, seventh fret thing is not exactly fifth, but hey. Wow, those are hot pickups. Do I have the gain all the way up? No. Volumes on five. Here's the settings I got. Volume. Okay, level on five. Gain on five. Volume on ten. EQ on five. Delay. I'll turn that to zero. Okay.
is my own stuff that I can't remember but hey well I can't wait to see what changing the strings are like on this crazy bridge but uh don't seem to be anything wrong with the strings so I think I'll just clip them off these crazies here, but uh, hey, it's got an, yeah, this is a two-piece neck, like, oh wait, is that a hmm, glue-on fretboard or not? Yeah, it, um, it's actually my first PV, and I would uh, go on a big nerd rant about that, how uh, back in the 90s when I was a kid, I saw a lot of PVs from this family, you know, um, most famous, the, the T60, which is like a double, it's like this with double humbucker, and then the T40 bass, which many years later, I was surprised to find was the big black bass, you know, for Dave Riley, and, uh, the Deer Departed Dave Riley and the Deer Departed Steve Albini from Big Black Lungs to all this stuff, songs about mating and songs, you know, Atomizer, all the big, that was a PVT 40 from the same instrument and 
when I was a kid back in the 90s, I would see them in guitar shops a lot for only like 300, 350 bucks, and they just never appealed to me. Like, I didn't like it that they kind of, you know, it's nice wood, but it kind of looks like a tabletop, and I don't know. I, I never hated it, but I just thought like, oh man, this is, yeah, probably fine, but, and then later I, I played a lot of, a lot of kids I knew back in the 90s had like real cheap shit PVs, like $100 P-Bass and Strat copies that really didn't seem very cool. So I got kind of down on PVs and my overlord guru intellectual guiding voice, Steve Albini was always making fun of PV amps, but I think he was talking about solid state amps. I don't know what he's talking Cause uh, hey, in Bubba Gray, I used a PV bass amp that was pretty sweet. Anyway, okay, so I always had a little bit of a stigma of PV, I don't know why, maybe it's a name, I don't know. Anyway, then I found out that the T27 specifically comes highly recommended by Scott Grove, who's always looking for three pickup guitars that you can kind of imitate a Strat sound on or get like the quack of having the pickups in between. Yeah, that is much too quiet. We need some more. Oh, wow. I had the, I had the volume not all the way. <laughs> Arsenal. I got a baritone, a bass six, a regular bass, and my uh, trusty Tascam, Rhodes microphone. This is all budget crap that Steve Albini would not approve of, but hey, I mean, I'm getting by, and I think Steve would approve of amateur nobodies just trying to make music, right, Steve? Uh, yeah, still, still reeling from the loss of our sensei. seems to be kind of microphonic but I don't know maybe that's the reason why it's so much louder neck pickup too anyway I'm not worried I bet it'll sound good plug directly into this because that's what I'm reduced to right now in my outpost in Kentucky where I'm gonna I got a whole lot of recording projects to do got Working on a thing with Stahlschlag right now. This is going to be awesome. And I just did a bunch of stuff with Max Weathersfield, and he's got already more stuff. 
for me to work on. Of course, Hall of Violence, but that's the singing job over there. Singing in quotation marks. Don't use inverted commas, Dad. They're quite cunty, anyway. Shellac, let's see some drop D work. D guy, but it's good for Indian music sometimes. Assume this was made in America. I mean, maybe it was made in Japan. I don't know. 1983, 650 bucks. I splurged a tiny bit this time in celebration of recent developments in Iran. And I just, you know, I got a couple bargain basement guitars for 250 bucks. I had the Firefly. You can watch more about that. Uh, where I th think the bridge is out of whack or it's just not made right. It won't say intonated. The, the King, the bass six over there is kind of okay, but not really. Charvel, that, that's pretty awesome. So, uh, yeah, long story there, but I need to replace the pickup. I just ordered a new one. I'll make a video about that too. Uh, my that was my first bass ever. Now, mm. Scott Grove, I could go on singing his praises of it. He's the only country musician who ever really spoke to me because he does a lot of chicken picking and it sounds cool. And I learned from him that uh, a lot of uh, sounds. He was really into going for uh, bright, snappy sounds with a lot of compression, but like super bright. And he was into getting Strat sounds. On, he was into making crazy three pickup guitars that would give you sort of Strat sounds, but have like a fixed bridge. And he was into uh, no knobs and like an on-off switch only for each pickup. I think that's a good idea. Anyway, that was just my Android's way of telling me I've been going on too long. So more beer and thank you, Scott Grove, for recommending the PV-227. Thank you, Tom's Gear Emporium from West Virginia for sending it to me in short order. Highly recommended. 
on reverb, and I will use this on the next recording, first with Stahlschlag and then with Max Weathersfield. So, for the three people who watch this channel, we're going to have a good old time. Now where? Ah, there we go. Now, it's time to take you out with the all-round carefree package. Oh, 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 oh.